hello and welcome back. Uh, this is the second part of the flight where I'm showcasing short finals Salt Lake City and Albuquerque airports. Uh, we're currently parked at Salt Lake City. Part one we flew in here from Twin Falls. Uh, also having a look at four flights, a, um, a GA flight navigation tool. Uh, which I've been enjoying using. I'd like to showcase some of the features on this second flight as well. Uh, and my own flight planning form, which I use to collect basic information from SimBrief and uh, pass that into the aircraft systems. Okay, so as we start off with um, completing that from the SimBrief screen. So we're uh, going from KSLC, destinations KABQ, Albuquerque, and our alternate is KCVS. Uh, just having a look down at the route now, um, I've already set this up in for flight. Um, I will go through that in a moment, but um, it's through Parley, Victor 484, Juliet, November, Charlie, Victor 187, Albuquerque. Um, looking for arrival runway 26 which will be an R and F approach okay let's have a look at um, doing this in four flight so we would have done that before entering sim brief but I did that uh, I've done that already I just want to show you um, how to do that in four flight so bring up the main four flight screen um, and click on FPL for flight plan and we are starting at Salt Lake City just going to centre the map on where we are click on the airport and add that to route and we're going to down to Albuquerque KABQ and that's the other way of entering into the flight plan and as soon as we have a couple of destinations a, a departure and a destination we should come up with some routes We'll click on the routes button and I normally will go for an airways route and uh, that was the one that I selected so if I now highlight that and so you see the routes now filled in and see so this is the route we're going to fly today which is going to be Parley and then Victor 484 airway all the way down to JNC and then the, pick up the 187 airway to Albuquerque it's a pretty simple route And this shows us arriving Albuquerque, runway 08 by the looks of it, but um, we need to obviously check the weather um, and fly the, the best route for that. So if I click on the routes button, you can actually see the departure and destination in there and all the intermediate points. So in terms of the flight plan, um, we do have that, should have that in SimBrief, the SimBrief flight plan. Um, but in terms of entering this into the onboard CDU uh, we just need the airways and the major intersection change points. Okay let's go back to SimBrief and complete the form now. So this is a form I've created, uh, it is available for free download of course. Um, it basically just compiles all the basic information that you get from SimBrief that you need in order to enter onto the aircraft systems. So I've started by entering the departure, destination, alternate and the route. The flight level today is 350. Um, actually when I ran SimBrief it gave me 170, or well, actually 117,000 in the US, which is crazy. Um, so you have to keep an eye on that. Um, it's quite a long flight so it's, um, it's not a trivial 50 mile jaunt. So I went back and edited it, put flight level 350 and regenerated it. Um, let's have a look at the first page. So the first bit of information, cost index is 64. And then our fuel, so trip fuel 5650, some contingencies, final reserv uh, reserves, extra fuel 5 tonnes, um, taxi fuel is about half a tonne, block fuel, which is the most important thing is 17,013 and that's kilos of course 
and extra fuel 5.0. Okay, so if we scroll down now, we'll actually get to the weight section. <clears throat> Got 207 passengers. Cargo 10.3, that's 10.3 tons. 10,300 goes on the form. The purpose of the form is to capture all the weights and fuel values in the format in which they'd be entered onto the aircraft, just to make it as simple as possible. A zero fuel weight is 120.6. Takeoff weight, well, 137.2. And that's it. That's all the information that we need at this stage. The rest of the information will come from the aircraft systems. So let's uh, go on board now. So we're parked at Salt Lake City. Uh, this is the short final paid short um, Salt Lake City scenery. Just going to just pan around a little bit. Just so much going on all the time there. So fantastic, apart from the aircraft, of course. Uh, one thing that X Plane is really disappointing with out the box is um, lack of sort of other aircraft. It always tends to be the same ones. So, an airport like Salt Lake City would be absolutely buzzing with activity. So, we're parked at uh, Charlie 13. Uh, that's the gate we arrived at um, on the previous flight in part one. So let's just go into the cockpit at this point. I just want to explain how I set the aircraft up between flights. All of the hydraulic equipment is turned off. Engines are off and we're running on external power at, the mo at this point. The wing position lights are on. All the fuel pumps are on. Cargo heats are off, window heats on, set so the passenger signs all on. The pressurisation hasn't been set yet. Uh, we're just running from ground air, um, so I'm actually going to just switch the ducts on. And the bleed feeds from the engines are off. And that's that's what we set in between the flights, so we're not running on, not consuming any fuel, uh, well, not our own fuel anyway, and uh, just using what's um, what's being provided from the ground. Um, the other thing is just setting the secondary screen up, and the FMC will be set in a moment. So everything else is as standard, so this is how I typically start a flight. Um, normally we'll start with the engines running and then close down those systems. It takes a couple of minutes and then we've got most of the systems all up and running can start the configuration. So let's do that now. So bring up the little iPad tool. Um, I've got the air and power set for the ground, the fuel truck, chocks and gate fit configuration because we are at a terminal with a jetway. Uh, have the Main, let's open the main door now. We'll be able to load passengers without. Put in the number of passengers, which again is 207. What I do actually with this is I try to choose a number sort of above 200 and just do it randomly. Cargo weight today 10,300. Block fuel weight is 17,013. And at this point I'll optimise central gravity so that would be obviously allocating passengers and cargo um, and, and maybe even fuel to optimise that. So we've got 20% MAC, that can go on the form and we'll be able to get our figure from the aircraft systems for that from the CDU. Okay well we have the doors open, um, I've put in the fuel requirements. We have 13.6 tonnes, we're going to need just over 17 tonnes. So if we just click the load button now and hopefully that um, will start taking on fuel but it's one of these things because the plane's pre-loaded. Um, I suppose one of the things with 
starting with a, an aircraft ready to go, uh, we need to unload first, so we'll just let that complete. I don't really need uh, the sim brief screen again, so I'll normally switch at this point over to uh, four flight. And what we can do is we can get the, the weather for Salt Lake City. So just on the airports tab. And we're showing 220 at 4 as the wind for Salt Lake City. So I'll make a note of that onto the form. Um, and a few clouds at 3000 broken 5500. We've got minus 3 for the temperature, minus 11 dew point, altimeter is 3019. Okay, so that's going to be favouring, it's a very light wind, but it's going to be favouring one ways 1.6 left or right. Um, from where we're parked, we'll probably go for 1.6 left. And that's also more or less in the direction of flight, so that's, uh, that's good. Let's have a quick look at Albuquerque. Now these just look at the timings on these. Um, they are fairly old weather reports, so we might need to check back in with these in a moment. Um, I'm going to leave Albuquerque. I'm not going to make a note of any of the detail on here, but just get a general idea. Wind is generally from the west, 10 knots. Quite unlikely in our flight to change, so we can anticipate a run landing on runway 26. That will be an RNAV approach. <coughs> And back to the map. So I'll just zoom in a little bit. So the blue dot indicates where we are sitting at the terminal. Uh, so we're going to be departing south from there. And then we'll do a, a perfector to intersect with Parlay or maybe the Parlay route uh, on Victor 484. Uh, one thing I have to be a bit careful of is some terrain. And uh, if I just bring up the VFR section or You'll see what I'm talking about there. There's some fairly high peaks there, up to around 12,000 feet. And for that reason, we may need to extend the southerly track to make sure that we've got that clearance before we turn in to intercept the planned route. I'm just going to switch the VFR section off for the moment and turn attention back to the iPad on. 767. So this is the 4 Flight 767, um, which is my favourite aircraft. And uh, I tend to use this even for shorter flights. And we can hear some activity there. So it's starting to load the fuel. Should be up to about 17, possibly 17.1. And the passengers you can hear as well in the background. So distance is 456 nautical miles. It's going to be about an hour and a half or so in flying. Uh, so we need to get going fairly soon. Okay, we can send the fuel truck and the turn off the gate configuration. Now we're fully loaded. In fact, we can also close the front door and that will enable us to set the pressurisation. So for that we need Albuquerque altitude, which is 5354, and I'm going to make a note of that on the form as well. And then set that on the pressurisation. No, we won't be able to set exactly that, but 5350 is near enough. Okay, let's go and um, set up the navigation route next. So I bring the CDU open. And I'm just going to click the top corner to activate the keyboard, so it's much easier that way. OK, 
okay so nav data out of date you won't get that message if you update yours but i don't bother there is a little bit of a discrepancy because Forflight does use up-to-date data of course because it's a real piloting app so sometimes you find there's a, a discrepancy between the um, so particularly the approach not the approaches but the arrivals sometimes um, they'll have slightly different sequence name but they look fairly unchanged in most cases now one thing about Forflight is that it's not, uh, although it's used for planning purposes, it will also track our position. It has no interface with the aircraft, so anything that we do in fourth flight has to be replicated into the aircraft, um, and vice versa. If we make a change on the aircraft plan, we need to update that on fourth flight, or it simply won't display properly. It's not really a problem because it's a fairly passive um, component to our flight. Anyway, I've entered the reference airport, KSLC. <clears throat> just click the origin again because that's already in the scratch pad and then the ABK ABQ is our destination and we're going to go for runway 16 left at SLC and activate that and now we can put in the route so we can refer either to for flight or the the pilot's log. So the first point is Parlay. Then via Victor four eight four in the airway column to JNC. And then Victor one eight seven airway column and then to ABQ. So a very very simple entry and execute that. And then we can tell uh, the CDU our departure runway 16 left. And just confirm that. I'm not going to follow a SID today. So we can just execute that as is. And for arrival into Albuquerque, I'm going to assume uh, that we're going to be arriving runway 26. And what we can do now is have a quick look on the airports tab and have a look at the procedures for arrival particularly the approach, so 26 will be the RNAV. I know from memory it's the RNAV Yankee approach that comes in from the north, essentially a sort of downward turning base wind turn, base leg turn, and then on to, on to final. But here's the, the problem with this. This is an RNAV approach. You look at the distances. We've only got four miles, more us turning on to short final. It's a very challenging maneuver in this aircraft not made any easier if we use the Zulu approach just from the south instead of the north uh, it's because the mountainous terrain just to the east of the uh, airfield uh, means that we can't extend that approach generally speaking I prefer landing easterlies on runway 08 uh, but the winds clearly favoring this runway today so with that in mind let's set up the arrival into Albuquerque and so we want the 26 Yankee RNAV approach. And it's asking us for our transition. There's not going to be any star um, because we'll come in from um, Albuquerque straight into the approach. So no DME, that's certainly the way I pronounce it, is going to be our favourable one here. So we'll choose that. Okay. So let's have a look at the legs now, just make sure they're okay. Uh, so switch to the overview screen, and just zoom out a bit on the map scale and then zoom into the navigation display and we can step through now. So departure from Salt Lake City to Parley and to you, Iguhu, Window, JNC, Cincy, Ham. Have Wu, Manka, Rizal, RSK, Mizzy, Tainer, Cabso, Curly, Awash, ABQ. And hopefully you can see the obvious corner cutting um, opportunity here will be direct from Awash to no DME. Um, so I'm going to actually set that up now in 
Nauru and completely bypass Albuquerque VOR and execute that. Stunning. So we should be able to go from our approach direct onto our um, RNAV straight in there and then straight on to Albuquerque with a missed approach if necessary. Okay, let's set the aircraft up now. So that's where we come back to the planning form. So, um, for, first thing is the gross weight. Well, that can, that's automatically calculated. So we put in the zero fuel weight of 120.6, and I just need to activate the keyboard again. And gross weight is automatically calculated. That's normally half a ton more, approximately half a ton more than our takeoff weight, um, because um, it's just the way it allows about half a ton for taxing. Our reserves are five. Cruise altitude going for three fifty. And cost index today six four. And takeoff will be five flaps. So thrust we can take off with maximum thrust or we can take off with derated thrust and we're going to do the latter so that takes into account the length of the runway in the temperature which is minus three and then it uses slightly lower power still safe takeoff power but it means you're not hammering the engine as much CG 20% gives us 3.9 that can go on the form so it's normally about four ish so 3.9 is uh, about what we'd expect and then we can select the speeds. Now we put all the weights and details in and activate each of these speeds. And what you'll notice is the main uh, speed bug in the autopilot is now fed with the V2 speed, which is 150. I'm just going to make a note of that onto my pad as well. So V1 is 135, rotate at 142, and V2 150. And just a quick eyeball of the form, I can see that's complete for now. VREF will be our reference approach speed, so we put that in as required. Uh, all that I'm going to do now is uh, to go back to Salt Lake City weather and just see if it's been updated. It looks like it has been. And uh, just make a note of any updates to that. So 260 at 5. So that's more of a crosswind now. That's more of a crosswind. Um, temperature is minus 2 and minus 11. So actually we could put in, uh, we could go in and put minus 2. I don't know if that's the right way of doing that here. There we go. Just to be a little bit pedantic with it. Um, altimeter setting 3022 so actually it's changed quite a bit 3022 and we'll get the Albuquerque weather when we're um, in flight okay so I'm just going to set four flight up for our taxi and get rid of the flight plan for box for the moment so this is quite a neat view. Um, you can zoom in. You've got a, a. It's not as detailed as a proper ground plan for an airport, but it's actually detailed enough, really, for our purposes. Uh, back to the aircraft. Let's set the. Uh, we've set the route up on the CDU. Let's set the autopilot panel up now, so flight directors can come on. In terms of the altitude, um, I'm going to set up 12,000, some initial altitude there. That would normally be fed from ATC. And we're taking off on 16 left. Um, so I'll set 160 up on the, it's the heading. It won't be exactly 160, and we can correct that um, when we line up. And just hit the button that sets the heading select.
Um, the altitude will be controlled by the VNF, so we can set that as well. So typically a departure will be runway heading to a certain height and then they'll vector you onto the departure route, from certainly from a bigger airport. So I'd like to simulate that as much as possible. Uh, everything else is set up as, as we need it. Um, the auto throttle arm, I normally do that when we're entering the runway. So let's set the altimeters up now. So the pressure setting we've got is 3022. Okay, and that's 4300 feet, which is as you would expect for this point. It's not always going to be the same as the airfield elevation, uh, but it's pretty close. So airfield elevation is three foot within that. Um, sorry, it's not three foot, it's about 70 foot uh, higher than our reference elevation, but of course, airports are never completely flat. Um, we can click the little box, the little screw thing to pass that over to the other altimeter. Keep uh, standard pressure on altimeter two. And the auto brakes are set for a rejected takeoff. A decision height, we can set that on route as well. Um, it's going to be higher actually as an RNAV approach. Um, but let's uh, let's allow us to get airborne before we start messing around with that. Um, switch our navigation display back to map mode. The trim looks like it's more or less set correctly, um, and I will. But we couldn't change that actually at this point because I've got all the hydraulics off. Okay, let's um, let's prepare for pushback. So it's call cool for the pushback truck. And you see that guy approaching there. So before we start moving, we need to start the APU and bleed some air from the APU. And we can see the APU's starting now. So I don't want to start moving until the APU is up and running and then we can switch off the ground power and send uh, ground power and air away. What we'll do is I'll just set the red anti-collision light because we are about to move. Everything else will just stay as is until got some engines started. Waiting for the click on the APU. There it is. So that's now on and the generators on. So we should be able to disconnect our ground power at this point. Just for the visual effect, as much as anything, just switch off the uh, the units on the ground. So if we go to a, an external view, see they've gone now. Pushback truck is ready for us. So we need to set this up ready for engine start now. Uh, so first thing is turn the packs off and make sure we've got enough duct pressure, which we have. Fuel is on. Um, started to both and we'll start engine two first of course and get the right screen and what I'm going to do is just release the brakes and so we can just start pushing back there Okay, and start the engine. Okay, so EGT is risen up to the yellow mark and N1 spooling up and then that starts going up 
faster and then the EGT falls. Okay, and so we can take an air feed, we can start the generator, start turning on some of the hydraulics. So the air driven hydraulics electric and the engine driven hydraulics come on. And we can switch our yaw damper on as well. And I will remove the chocks. and we can start pushing back. Oops, I thought I'd click that off. There we are. Nice timing on the baggage cart. And we can go back to the top and engine number one. Starting Okay, EGT rising Let's keep an eye on that And what we'll do is get a slightly better view. And we can put our left engine hydraulics on, generator, air. brakes and system rising it's probably one of the engines stuck in reverse I'll sort that in a moment let's just do one thing at a time okay yeah this is a this is a consequence of the throttle that I've got which is um, really not very good Okay, we can send the push truck now. And we've got the brakes on. So we're holding there. So the next thing will be to set the trim and flaps. Okay, um, so the trim is meant to be 3.9. We're more or less there anyway. Flaps will be five degrees. Okay. To the top we can actually put our packs back on for the moment. And we don't need the APU anymore because we've got engines running so we can switch that off. Generator off and the duct feed off. Um, we'll switch the taxi well lights on while we're up here and also the cargo heater can come on. So we should get a message saying the AP generator's off because it's still running um, and we are we are still, um, we've, we've turned the generator off but the APU is still running but it will eventually switch itself off. One thing I have noticed is our landing altitude isn't correct. I thought I'd set that 5354 five, so that's it's probably my mistake there. So five three five should be enough. Okay, that's good. Quick eyeball on everything else at the moment. It's, um, it's looking good. Flight door is locked. 
so we can start our taxi procedure. Um, so one of the things we're going to be doing on the taxi procedure will be to um, check the hydraulics um, and the movable surface to make sure they're working correctly. And so switch the map view, you can actually um, can follow our path along the Salt Lake City plan. So brakes off, get rid of the speed brakes which seem to be out at the moment. It's probably a consequence of one of the engines going to reverse there. So the first thing to do is uh, brake test of course. Okay, and then first officer of test theirs, but there's no first officer today. So turning the tiller left, you can see the rudder moving left. Nice wing view as well actually. Test our air brakes are working. And then as we correct the turn to the right, just check the rudder move to the right is correct. And then when we get on the straight, we're going to do a left turn in a moment. Um, we can test the other movable surfaces. Okay, so I'm going to test the, um, the, the movable surfaces. So start with uh, bank right and bank left, center, and then climb and descend. Descend bank right and left to the climb left and right. Okay, and they seem to be working correctly. I did have a bad experience on a recent flight where um, X-Plane had dumped my all of my joystick settings, which I was very upset about. And um, so I set them up quickly and went to take off, only to discover that I'd set the axes wrong. So the elevator axis was roll and vice versa. That didn't go well. Thankfully I was able to pause it and quickly configure it. So just a quick check, we've got flaps set. It's very difficult to read from the zoomed out view, but you can see five is set there, so that's good. A quick check on the overhead panel. So I'm looking ready for any orange lights and there's none. What we will do is switch the, as it's derated thrust takeoff, we'll actually switch the packs off for takeoff. That just gives us a little bit more power. And so we're climbing initially to 12,000 feet. We're going to maintain runway heading. We don't know what the runway heading is until we're lined up, um, although um, you can actually get that from the aircraft plan, the airport plan. taxiing out.
it's got a nice view so there's a decent amount of detail here and it's not just at the airport as well as um, the surrounding areas um, quite a bit of work on the um, local area as well as being done for the scenery package so, so this is the uh, short final Salt Lake City package and we'll be flying down to Albuquerque which is another short final paid scenery pack okay let's start setting up the overhead let's get the packs off and we'll put the starter to continuous And uh, we can switch landing lights on as well. Quick check for sanity and taxiway lights can, taxi lights can come off. So we get the enunciator as we expect. Um, the other thing we need to do, we've got the rejected takeoff there. We need to switch transponder to on. T-A-R-A. -A. And we can put the auto throttle arm switch on now. So we'll assume we had um, our lineup clearance. Approaching what runway we do is just zoom left. out on for flight. Entered runway 16 left, 11,900 feet remaining. See, Salt Lake City would be a, a pretty busy airport. I'm sure you wouldn't be fortunate enough to be able to do this manoeuvre without a couple of minutes' wait. So I normally fly the first part manually to decision uh, to the thousand foot point. Right, so before we forget, I'm going to just uh, adjust the heading value. So 163, that's about right. Okay, we've got heading select and take off um, in the attitude indicator, so that's what we're expecting. Okay, let's go for it. So the wind's from the right here today, so just aileron into wind slightly. Okay, let's rotate. Set the attitude about 18 degrees. That should hold our speed more or less. And there we are, we can actually now pitch down slightly. And so what I'll do is just engage the autopilot at this point. It's holding well. Get some wing views on our departure. You see what I mean about the scenery around the airport, it's actually looking rather good. And back to our air cockpit duties here, just approaching the first flap retraction speed, that'll be flaps to one. And we can turn the packs back on now. And flapped up speed. So just just to clarify, flying runway heading and we are flying up to 
12,000 feet. So you see on four flights uh, the path of the aircraft. So what we'll um, now do is assume that we've been instructed to fly direct to PAL. Get to the right page. And so we can say direct PAL into there, execute. And that gives us a direct path from our present heading and click LNAV and the aircraft should turn. So that's one way of doing it, that's where you want to go direct to a waypoint. The other would be if we'd been vectored to perhaps intersect the SLC to PAL track. Okay, as we approach the cloud, I'm going to switch some anti-icing equipment on. There we go. Let's assume also that we're being told to fly heading 060 and the idea here is that we've been allowed to cut the corner a little bit and not fly to PAL. One thing we're going to do actually is just switch the synthetic vision on which is one of the features of full flight it gives us a visual view of the terrain below us. Um, and so what we're going to need to do here is, as we're not going to pile this, we're going to essentially get rid of it. So just get the next point, which is MTU, and put it in place of pile and execute. And then if we hit LNAV, we'll fly now from our present position uh, direct to MTU. So just breaking through the top of the cloud layer there. And we can switch our landing lights off. So we're at 12,000 feet at the moment. Um, assume we've been given a further climb, so let's go up to, say, flight level 200. Two and obviously it'll just hold there until we hit flight change or VNAV. So VNAV will manage that climb for us. Now, if we've cleared to flight level 200, it means that we can now change our pressure setting to 2992. Before I lose 3022, our original altimeter setting for SLC, I'm just going to put it into the box 2, just as a matter of good practice, and then 2992 on here. Get a message saying the alts disagree, and they don't any longer. And you only seem to get that um, when you're in the air. That's a neat little trick. Um, lots of little hidden magic screws in this aircraft. So just a quick check. Flaps are up, gear up. TARA on the transponder. Go 
uh, just a quick scan at the top to make sure all is well, make sure there's nothing forgotten. And because we're clear of cloud, we can switch the anti-ice equipment off. So one thing we can do at this point is we can um, do a quick check on our, our sim brief screen and see at MTU, which we're approaching shortly, what our fuel should be. And so we're expecting 14 tonnes to be remaining at MTU. So it's just a good way of um, just checking how much we actually have when we reach that point. And we have 15.6 at this point. If we switch to the progress screen, it should, it'll give it an estimate of fuel at the next waypoint, which is 13.4. Um, we'll see how accurate that is. That's often quite a conservative figure. And now we're at this kind of altitude, we can switch synthetic vision off. But um, synthetic vision is absolutely a fantastic feature of um, for flight, particularly if you are a GA pilot, um, it just gives you that level of assurance in bad weather and you're flying near mountains. Uh, I tend to have it switched on during departure and arrival. Let's just zoom out a little bit on the chart. So this is a north up view in full flight. Um, we can also change to track up view. Track up. Um, and that particular option will put the aircraft in the lower third of the screen. It's quite handy. It more or less matches what we have on the navigation display. But when we're flying approaches, um, one of the premium feature of full flights it can show the approach plate over this map but the approach plate's always north up so um, you, it's very difficult to read unless it's uh, the, the whole navigation systems in the north up perspective but that might affect us for the rest of the flight so let's just have a quick look at the weather at Albuquerque Two fifty thirteen strongly favouring uh, runway two six. So we can have a look at the procedure for that. And that's the Yankee approach. And we can add. What we can do is add that to our package of maps. Now this is really only relevant to pe people doing real flights in G Air aircraft, uh, because what that will do is store it on the tablet and you won't need uh, access to the internet. It stores a package of all the information you might need. It doesn't really affect us today because we've got internet connections. This is a simulated flight. But it does mean if you go back to the charts, um, any of the charts you've saved will appear on there. So if we decided, well, we, if something magical happens with the wind, we might want to go for the RLS at 8 and then we can add that as well and then if we have a look at our charts page you can see Isla's array and RNAV there ready for our purpose now at the moment we have no procedure set up in um, um, for flight but we have set that up on the CDU so let's go ahead and replicate that now as well uh, although just before, that's just, that's given us a bit more of a climb, uh, say 300. Gonna hold out too low for too long. There we go. Let's check the wing views out. So actually you see on the CDU the fuel estimate's now 
so we're slight we've got slightly more fuel than planned and you generally find that on the flight that you end up with a bit more than you planned which is always good of course anyway back to four flight um, so what we do is click procedure and we're not going to fly a star into ABQ uh, we're just going to go straight off our original plan straight up to the uh, approach so approach RNAV Yankee and actually it's what's really neat here as you can see it says um, it's list the approaches and it actually lists the best one for the winds so 26 Yankee which is that one and you see what I mean it's it's actually overlaying the approach onto the map that bit of the map so we're going to go via no DME but we will not go down to ABQ and, and then back up add that to the route it then adds the approach and the starting point to our uh, approach onto the flight plan as well as displaying the chart over our map which is pretty neat Uh, one other thing you can do with this is you can click on the charts and you can change that if we were suddenly going in on the ILS 8 change that and it comes up with a map there obviously we'll have to change our routing but very very quick to change the other settings you can make here you can um, change the plate colours to inverse colours that can tends to blend in with the background a little too much for my liking but you can then also change the opacity of the background which makes it rather nice so actually that's quite nice especially in low light or night time you wouldn't really want a great big glaring white screen um, that would actually be quite uncomfortable so we'll leave that on for the moment and this icon top right will centre back on where our aircraft is. We're slightly off track because we are going direct to MTU. I'll just zoom out a little bit. So 14.9 is our current fuel and we are 24 miles to MTU, it's estimating 14.2 certainly flying away from the bad weather anyway I love the um, I love the vapor effect on this aircraft. It's amazing. This is approaching flight level 300. Let's give ourselves a further clearance. Get us up to our plan altitude, 350. So as long as the aircraft is continuing to climb, then it will just accept the new altitude. If it's leveled off course you can put the altitude in but it will hold the pre-selected altitude until you command it to change which is actually a really useful feature because it means um, when we get up to our cruise altitude we can then set that for our descent and no it's not going to start descending immediately it'll only do it in accordance with the flight management computer So at some point I'll need to go through and just check the legs as we approach no DME, DWeb, Zabco, Trammy, Cronel. This is the turn to final and this doesn't really give us, the speed's a little high for this aircraft um, with such a short final. So we're going to need to get the speed really low for that. As I say, I'll continue to monitor the weather en route and make sure that we are still um, favouring 2.6 or whether we could take um, 
for example, 2 1, which would give us a, a longer final approach. Just reaching, just um, passing an MTU at this point, and 14 and a half is our fuel, so half a ton better than planned, and that's one of the early points. So we should arrive with absolutely abundance of fuel on board. So as we approach our cruising altitude, we can have a look and it's telling us um, the optimal cruise altitude would be 360 to 400. So we could always set that in there and request that from ATC. And assuming that we've been given that, and it would be in fact correct because we're traveling south, um, it would be an even flight level. Yeah, so that's my ban on that one. That's not a huge amount of terrain here really, it's, uh, it's quite um, flat, quite arid and dry I'd imagine. And one thing we can do, of course, is uh, release the passengers. thousand feet to go. Now we've got various um, options with the map in full flight. Uh, this is giving us a basic aeronautical and traffic map, so it's air traffic. If we want, we can switch that off, and that just gives us basic ground information, traffic, and our route, and that's it. So that's a really nice representation um, if we just want to track our route. And that's more or less what the navigation display is showing us, obviously not including any ground fixes. I do like occasionally switching on the VFR sectional. And... As I say, this is probably best viewed in the north up orientation, so let's do that now. And the purpose of this is to have a look on route and see what our minimum safety altitude would be on route. So looking for the highest point, see a mountain range there, 14,500, pretty high. And what we can do is you choose the highest point on the route and use that as so your safety altitude so 14 and a half would probably go for 15,000 so why would we do that well two reasons first of all once we've reached a cruise altitude assuming we're not playing on a, any higher altitude um, it means we can as soon as we get to the top of the descent the aircraft will start descending but it won't descend below whatever altitude we put in here and we have the assurance that's never going to be lower than any of the obstructions on route. If you do change our route, it, we need to rethink that. Also, also, if we did have some like rapid decompressurization, then if you had that at this point, well, we could probably get down to about 10,000 feet quite safely. 15,000 though, no one's going to worry too much about that altitude. Um, 
key thing is do an emergency descent down to a lower altitude where you're not reliant on pressurisation so much. So we do have a potential conflict just seeing aircraft at our altitude. It says zero, which means it's not above or below. So I am going to try to get it right. I'm just going to set it up for a possible turn away from that aircraft. Looks like it's going to cross in front of us. So I'll probably be speaking to ATC at this point, saying, what the hell, man? That's a little close for comfort. And assume we don't hear anything from ATC, I'm going to actually start an avoidance turn now. We are actually more or less on the collision course of the aircraft, so we're going to get out of its way. You don't say. I'm having words with ACC later, that's uh, not good. At least our collision avoidance system is working. Okay, I think we're clear of that traffic now. Ah, that's close. That's close. That would have been white knuckle, white to the eyes kind of proximity, so I'm not happy about that. So we're on heading select at the moment. We can go back to LNAV. When we're within a certain distance of our track, and we've not really come very far off, switching onto LNAV should automatically lock us on. If not, it will hold the heading until we're on... Uh, until we're quite near to the track and then let's continue following it. Okay, so it's going to slowly bring us back onto track. There we go. And we can have a quick look at Simbrief to see what our fuel state for JNC should be. So that's 13.2 tonnes. That's Grand Junction JNC. And we're currently on 13.9 and we're 28 miles away. So actually it's still going to be a little bit above our planned fuel, which is good. Um, so, even on these flights, it's not a trivial length flight. Even on these flights, it's always good to sort of plan ahead as much as possible. Uh, so, I doubt there's been a weather update since the last time we looked. It's actually um, about to switch over there for Albuquerque. It's 2.50 at 13. Very interested to know what that wind is doing. Could have a look at the forecast and looks like it's possibly moving to the northwest 12 to 18 so we wouldn't get away with uh, runway 21 we would not get away with one runway 08 and actually you can look at the runways there so 21 would be a 12 knot uh, headwind um, at this time, but if it's going up to 290, then it's going to be stronger. 26 though, 12 knot headwind. And 1230 isn't really long enough for us anyway. But. So we're still planning for 26. 
Uh, what we can do now is just have a look at the approach chart for RNAV26. Now, if you invert the colours on the map, for the approach plate on the map, it reflects that in the charts, which I guess makes sense. Um, I don't know if there's an option to control those independently. In fact, I haven't found an option to change that on here. If you wanted to configure it, I don't know, maybe a setting. So, yeah, there we are. So what I like about Flight is it, it does, it is really intuitive, you know, there's, um, it's quite powerful, but you discover things fairly quickly. Uh, the other thing that it's got, I haven't really used this, is the ability to draw on the map. Um, so, uh, I didn't quite intend to do that, so let's just undo that. Um, but you could say, okay, that's our, that's our entry point. and do lines and all kinds of other stuff. I just don't do that for the moment. But it's great if you're um, training for an instructor, you could use that to mark up on the map. Uh, and that should be retained. I'm just going to draw a little um, squiggle just down here to warn us of the terrain, say so done. And that stays, as you can see, stays on there. OK, we're just uh, at Grand Junction at the moment, our fuel 13.7 versus 13.2, so we're about half a tonne more fuel than we planned, which is great. So if you wanted to have a look at um, Albuquerque and get familiar with the surrounding area, click on KABQ in the flight plan and then show on map is a shortcut. And I'm just curious and actually I've just satisfied my curiosity. So that markup that we did, the uh, squiggly line, is, is on the overlay map as well as on the standalone map. So that's really useful. What we are going to do however, is we're not going to fly down to Albuquerque at no DME. We've actually changed that on our plan. Just show you on the CDU. So AWASH and then no DME, not AWASH, ABQ, no DME. So the way we can change that on here is by putting in a point before ABQ, which is also on the Victor 187, insert before, and put AWASH on there. And then we can remove ABQ, and that gives us exactly our route that we have on the flight plan on CDE. So just having a look at the heights here. Got fixed heights starting at 8,000, 7,200, 6,900, just descending between those points. Probably will take over maybe on the base leg and fly that manually. I have done this before in this aircraft, it's not impossible. Um, but um, one thing is that you are flying towards terrain, um, and so you'd need to be very, very careful in poor visibility. A good example of where you'd use the four flight synthetic vision and uh, that would be really comforting uh, if you were approaching that mountain range pretty close to the mountain range before doing the turn and then the missed approach point is direct to 8000 via Yano and then Albuquerque VOR, so it's just runway heading, very simple. 
And then there's our runway length, nearly 14,000 feet, so we've got lots of runway. That's why on occasions I'll just fly with a 10 knot tail when the lands are at eight. Uh, but we could have done that today, but I think it'd be interesting to fly the RNAV. check and see if the weather's been updated yes it has yeah so it's now 314 knots so we do have a runway 30 could consider using that it's not very long um, it's probably okay for landing but it's uh, it's, it's about 6,000 feet um, which is um, not really very long so what we'll do is keep an eye on it because at the moment we've got a um, we actually have a bit of a crosswind from the right let's have a look at the approaches into 3-0 if, if available and that would be a visual approach anyway that would be a visual approach and so my plan will be to fly the RNAV approach for 2-6 and in the event that I don't think it's going to work out, I'll um, request uh, runway 30 and just fly a visual approach into 30. Another aircraft contact just about 10 o'clock position, aiming for us at this point. It's only 300 feet below us, 200 feet below. General rule of thumb, if the contact remains fixed in relative position on the windshield, then there's going to be a risk of collision at this point. Actually, it's pretty uncomfortable, uh, but I think that aircraft will pass behind us. It's at the same level. So one thing we could do here, um, it's a nine f approach, so there's no um, frequency to set up, but um, we could put the A to C frequency up on 18.0. And we don't tend to get ATIS so far out. It's always worth preparing as much as you can. And what I will do, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the 08 ILS frequency in as well. It's 111.9. 
and the approach course is 079. So it's 111.9 and 079. I'm not going to ident it, but just have that ready in case we decide we're going to land 08. And I think I have that already on. Yeah, that chart's already in our list of charts, so that's available for us if we need. So we've got the R nav 26, and we've got ILS 08. Again, we'll do a quick check on the fuel for RSK. And RSK should be 12 tonnes of fuel, rattlesnake VOR. And that's not yet on our progress chart. Should be the one after the next one. It's estimating fuel at arrival at Albuquerque to 11.6, so 12 tonnes at RSK. It's going to be a bit over. I'm going to have a bit more fuel on board than that, I think. Now, I, I have tried um, accelerating these slightly longer flights if, well if you can call an hour and a half a long flight I'm not really keen on mega long flights because we just get the same excitement with much much more hours of boredom in between uh, but the way it seems to work in X-Play is um, flies at the normal speed doesn't accelerate the speed but it um, makes the world smaller which is fine, fine, and actually a pretty good way of doing it, except for one small factor. If you have a major turn coming up, your aircraft essentially is flying a much bigger radius, and it will easily come off track, um, <laughs> if I've explained it correctly. Um, this flight, probably not so much, because the bearing changes are 10 degrees or less. But sometimes you get almost a 90 degree bend, something close to 90 degrees, and you would just overfly that because it's going to anticipate based on your speed um, and the usual distance. If it's made that distance much smaller um, in order to simulate sort of flying faster, then you're effectively flying a much broader track. So, see the top of descent coming just after the um, Rattlesnake VOR. So, some thoughts um, in preparation for that. Um, we've got 15,000 set, which is absolutely fine. Uh, so, we'll just leave that as is. Have a look at the legs. So, just after RSK. Uh, so, it's, so, these flight levels, so these are the estimated. They're, they're not fixed points just the computation uh, of the altitude in a descent. Uh, it will descend only to 15,000 in accordance with what I've set up. And if we wanted to, we could set up um, our lowest altitude that we can really descend to is 9,000 here. That's a fixed altitude. We must be at no DME at 210 at 9,000. The fact it's in bold means that it's fixed. We couldn't go in and change that. So if we wanted to try 240, 10,000 for example. Okay, it will allow us to change it. Didn't know that. Probably best put it back. Now, the other 
thing is the uh, the A and B that appear sometimes after a level. That means above for A and B means below. Um, and so that means here we must be at least 8,000 or higher. And that's just part of the procedure. And so just with that in mind, it'd be good to have a look at the RNAV approach. And just look at the sort of speed. So I think D-Web is a point where we start, need to start slowing down a little bit. So D-Web got 210. That's probably all right, actually. And then Zabco, well, Zabco is where we're going to start turning. So I'm tempted to put in 180 in there. I have the flaps already set up. 180, 7200A. Okay. And then train me. See, these distances are really short, so I've got to make it realistic. Maybe 170 at 6700. No, I'm just going to switch keyboard on because it's much quicker. 170 slash 6700A and zoom X I think that needs to be 50 150 at 5880 so that's not in bold that 5880 so it's not a mandatory altitude it's an intermediate one if that makes sense it is now I've now set that as a mandatory one because I've put in, I have, you can't just put a speed in, you have to put on altitude as well. And then this KBQ26, that's our missed approach. That's our missed approach, so we don't want to change that. And this is particularly important for the RNAV approaches. Um, with the localised or, or ILS approaches, you will automatically end up end up coming onto the localizer and then the glide slope and flying that and that give you speed control anyway so maybe not as crucial really but when you're flying our nav you're going to be locked onto your vertical navigation lateral navigation all the way in and so you need to make sure those speeds are absolutely spot on and with that in mind uh, just eyeballing the approach reference speed 30 degree flap which is our landing flap 139 i'm just going to make a quick note of that because that will actually go into the speed box. So as we approach Rattlesnake VOR and the top of descent just after it, make sure we have a target altitude set which is lower than our current one. Uh, or the CDU will complain to say check target altitude. But also make sure that you've got VNAV mode set. Because if you have altitude hold, it will just hold the altitude, current altitude, and you'll just sit there forever.
Destination weather is 118.0. So we have a a wind, a 40 degree wind from the right. A slight crosswind. See what it's gonna how it's gonna impact us. So the crosswind component is seven knots, that's quite reasonable. Twelve knot headwind. Just passing rattlesnake at this time. And 12.6 tonnes of fuel on board versus 12. So we're just creeping up very slightly on our estimates. Reaching the top of descent any second now. There we go. And drag required, no surprise. That's because we have a descent speed set, which is actually in our descent page on the CDU. And it will it will not try to descend until we're near that speed. And you see as we approached it, it's so using the air brakes to control the speed and that then puts us into a descent. It's a bit of a fine art this old uh, air brake thing. You hardly notice it there. And as it starts descending thought about it for a second, I just need to feed in a bit more air brake. And you can see me doing that. What you don't want to do is put too much air brake on, finally auto throttle starts fighting with you. Just try and hold the descent speed. Now the other option we could we could uh, make here is we could go into descent and you see the descent speed is uh, 0.759 and um, we could actually change that if we wanted to but I'm, I'm going to leave it as is Let's have a look at some of the options for the approach plates, the ones superimposed on the ch on the map here. So you see there's a little um, cog icon in the top left. Um, you can click on that, or in fact you can also click on the chart itself um, to bring up some options. So as I mentioned earlier, you can change the approach if we decide to go in RLS08 for whatever reason, we could do that here. So we choose any of the other approaches that are available to us, including the approach procedures. Got an option to switch off annotation. So that's the markup, my line that I drew up on there, which is quite nice. If I screwed that up, I could switch it off. Invert plate colors. I'm gonna keep, keep it as inverse. I think actually it works better. And just uh, opaque out the background. Uh, the other thing you do is hide plate, but you think, well hang on a minute, uh, I didn't mean to do that, how do I bring it back? Well, don't worry about it, just go to charts, choose the plate you want, which is the one here, if it's not in view, just click on it, and then share button, that's the first button in the top right, 
and map and that should just put it back on there. It took me a while to find that and I did panic a little bit when I hid it thinking there'll be a, an icon still there to reveal it again. So just a, a little a little bit about um, four flights. Um, I'm I think it's uh, you know if you're a serious simmer and you fly IFR or even if you fly VFR um, it's um, it's definitely worth considering it's a subscription based service it only runs on Apple tablets and phones I've not tried it on the phone uh, I'd imagine it's uh, a cut down version in terms of functionality it's um, you can get a trial for 30 days and then it's um, a hundred dollars a year US dollars a year for the basic pack and what that will give you is more or less everything you see on here except for no synthetic vision and you won't see charts superimposed on the map as I've got here but you will see charts in their own section in the charts tab uh, there's probably a load of other options but they're the main ones that I, I see now it's I think it's two hundred dollars for the premium pack and that gives you um, gives you the charts overlaying or if you're on the chart view it, show, it shows the aircraft on there as well so if you're on this chart view here and we zoomed in you'd actually see the aircraft flying on that perfect learning exercise for um, if you're doing instrument rating or something like that uh, if you don't want to go for the charts at $200, you can pay 25 just for the synthetic vision. And so that's going to give you this capability. So I suppose it comes down to whether you fly a lot on instruments. And if you don't, then $125, you've got a pretty neat map, mapping and navigation system, plus you've got the synthetic vision. And if you fly near um, terrain, in your as a real pilot or in the simulation then it's uh, probably will pay for itself and considering um, some of the aircraft for X-Plane are near to a hundred dollars um, and like that kind of investment this is a package you can take from a micro to a, a heavy airliner um, works really well, very easy to set up, <coughs> just need to make sure we're in the same network, um, get the IP address of the computer running X-Plane, oh, actually the other way around, you've got the IP address of the tablet, and just opt to set it up, say I'd like to connect to 4Flight. So let's just um, zoom in slightly on the, on the navigation display. So on the planning form, uh, we could keep this updated during the flight. Sometimes I record in the estimated and actual fuel values in there. Um, when we get the ATIS for Albuquerque, that can go in there. Um, star and transition, well, we're going to put in RNAV 26 Yankee, landing runway 26, because that is more or less what we're going to get our only option tonight. Um, and taxi instructions as required. One thing I've also put on here is a pushback time, takeoff time, landing time, and parking time. Uh, I don't think I ever remember to fill that out, but that would typically 
form part of your plan. And so this in a real aircraft, um, what you see on SimBrief is a legal document and that has to be completed for each flight. The problem with it is it all the information, all the crucial information is dotted around with lots of noise. So I created this um, brief form, hopefully simple enough, to get all the information on there that you want. And the key thing is that you know when you filled this out, you know there's no more information to get and you can just enter it as is onto the aircraft system. So just monitoring the descent now, we're just approaching the transition altitude of 18,000. Um, so at this point it would be really handy to have the altimeter setting for Albuquerque. Uh, just quickly check on here. So a fairly recent one was 3012. So I'm going to stick that onto box 2. And I'll use that until I actually get the real one from um, the ATIS. Realistically, you would be picking up the ATIS from this distance. Um, there's no terrain that stopped that in particular, so um, it's a little um, unrealistic getting it so late. Although, Albuquerque I International Sunport Information ah, Sierra 2000 Zulu weather. Wind to 70 at 9. Visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 4,500 view, 8,500 view, temperature 2, dew point minus 8, altimeter 3006, arriving runways 26, 30, departing runways 21, 26, 30, advise on initial contact you have Sierra. Alright, so I shouldn't have opened my mouth, so, um, okay that's good. So 3006, let's silence that before it repeats itself. And let's put that onto box 1, 3006. Transfer that over. And 2992 on box 2. Just give our flight levels. And we're descending to 15,000, so we're not far off that now. Uh, what I think we can do is put in 11,000. We could actually put 9,000 in if we wanted. The reason for 11,000 is that is the estimated height at AWASH before we turn to no DME. Or NODME, however you pronounce that. You have to be a little careful with these because it could be there's a mountain range between AWASH and no DME. I don't think there is, but um, you know the fact that no DME, we have to be at a certain height, we have to be at 9,000 to start a procedure. Can't guarantee our safety if we're at that height anywhere else. So. Um, Normally ATC would, would give us a, a clearance that would avoid such problems, but obviously we have to do quite a bit of our own work on X-Plane. So I could call some <laughs> full flight, could stick on the VFR sectional. And that's where you might want to just temporarily hide the, the approach. And you see there's nothing to affect between AWASH and no DME. Right, let's get the um, seatbelt sign on. And put the starters to continuous flight. And as we turn from AWASH to no DME, we can put landing lights on as well.
I'll switch the VFR section off as we don't need that anymore. And let's put that down to 9,000 now. Because that's the height we've got to be at at no DME. And there's our turn. I wash to no DME. Oh, that's beautiful, that. So as you can see, this is the point at which I think short final have created the textures for this area. Certainly someone has and they look rather nice. And what we'll do is we'll um, go ahead and switch landing lights on now. Preparation. A uh, quick check. Anything else that needs to come on? I think we're okay. I'm not going to bother with auto brakes. Uh, so we have tons of runway. Right, so it's going to ask us for tra drag required because we've got speed reduction to 210 now. Oh, it's tagged at 240, I think it's because we're above 10,000 and then it should go down to 210 as we drop below it. couple of wing views for you. We've got a little bit of low lying cloud there, you can just see that ahead. So sometimes I find the I can't get the um, aircraft out of this 240 speed hold, even though it's on the VNAV. And we've got VNAV mode set. So one thing we have to be careful here um, is that we don't end up leaving the altitude set too high because it will simply not descend below that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just set that down to the next lowest level, which is 8,000. And the flight management computer should make sure that we don't descend below 9,000 until we're at no DME. What I will do if it doesn't switch over to 210, it should be already at 210. Oh, there we are. There we are. That's better. I'm going to say I'd bring in speed mode because we absolutely have to nail the speed. Also, um, let's set up synthetic vision as well. And just zoom in. So you see the mountain range, you see we're already below some of the peaks there. Uh, I have one stage of flap in. I'm gonna hold off for the other stage. And we'll bring in the gear um, on the base turn, I think. That's D-Web now, just turn a very slight turn to the right. And the airport is just out in our sort of one to o'clock position there. Can't really see it because of the centre support in the window. So 
So I'm just going to be one step ahead with the altitude. Set that to 7200. In theory, you shouldn't touch that until we've reached the, each point. Quick check up here. I think we're good for landing. Set the scale blow up. <clears throat> it's a bit, a bit murky down below there, it's just a, a little cloud layer. Oh, it's going so well for the flight. Check. We've got no icing enunciation, so we'll just keep the icing off for the moment, I think. So 7200 would be our next target. And at 180 knots. So I'm going to stick in the gear at this point. And let's get another stage of flap in there as well. See the airport just off to the right there. There it is, doesn't look that impressive from this angle. That's the gear locked. And the speed has crept up a bit, so we need quite a bit of spoiler there, that's why I don't like these tight turns really. And that's at 6900, 6700 in fact, because it's going to just get on top of me quite quickly. And there's the speed, bring another stage of flap. We just went a little bit below there. So forgive it for that, I think. And then, actually, we can bring in 5880. 59. I'll do. Why is it turning left? No. <laughs> you see the value of the synthetic vision this point. Quick wing view. That's nice. I think I'm just going to concentrate on landing at this point. <laughs> so you see some um, mountains straight ahead of us. I'm going to bring that flap in a little early just to bring the turn around a little bit. But really, you just want to fly this visually. And let's just disengage everything here for the moment. Five hundred. Yeah, that's a problem. Another stage of flapping. As I say, you know, we've got a nice long runway, so now we've got to hit 139. So 
even with a nice long runway we've got to be a little bit careful there and probably above the desired glide slope and let's bring the final stage in really for um, a lot of work to be done at this stage of the flight for the poor pilot so 139 so it looks like Morris on the glide which is more luck than judgment just little corrections at this point so the wind is down the runway, which is um, a, a bit of an advantage. And we've got a decision height, so we'll land off that. Just slowly ease off the speed. 100. Sink rate. 50. 40. Pull up. 20. 10. to idle and reverses out. Now when we get below a certain speed, the foreflight will switch to the map for you, which is quite handy. And we'll probably take the next high speed turn on the right. So our terminal is off that end, so actually it's quite convenient actually landing on 2.6. So kind of land towards the terminal, which is always nice. And there it is, the map view. Just zoom in, so we're off at alpha 6. Speed brakes reset. And what I'll do is park up and just um, review some of that last bit of the flight where I was a little bit too busy to be demonstrating the scenery to you. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful airport though, I love it. And actually when it's sunny, it's not so much now, but you get absolutely stunning reflections off the uh, surfaces. Let's bring that to a halt. Set the brakes. And have a look at the replay. So it's really beautiful scenery. You see, um, full flight can also be replayed, of course, because it's just getting the position from the simulator.
So we overshot the center line slightly, but you've got to be so careful with the speed at this point. You don't want to be too fast, but certainly not too slow. That's probably why no one's living on that final approach of course for this runway. And you see on board flight as well how accurate that runway position is. And those little masts are just obstructions. So it could be masts or mountains. Sweet. 7 out of 10 for not being quite on the centre line, I think. Lots of interesting ground features at uh, Albuquerque as well. It's worth just uh, having a quick explore. Um, I, I may do a separate video for each of the airports because you don't really get that true feeling when you're doing a flight, you're just focusing on getting airborne and then getting landed and then kind of getting to the gate. So you really need another flight where uh, maybe a helicopter flight to really appreciate it. But these are actually my only paid scenery packs. I'm very happy with them. I think they're um, excellent value and really enhance the, uh, the whole flying experience. And just this grounds, um, sort of dry grass and all the objects parked around, just stunning. So we've got all of the ground textures um, and a lot of grunge, which is realistic, obviously. Very realistic. Um, if, if you look at real airports, they're never that clean. You see a lot of broken areas around here, just to the sides of the um, taxiways. OK, let's switch out of replay mode. Yeah, and just do the after landing checks. So we can switch that light off, we can switch our cargo heats off, fuel dampers can come off, hydraulics obviously stay on, landing lights can come off, taxis can come on. Okay, that's that. Uh, let's get the flaps up as well. I mean, normally you'd be a couple of you guys doing this, so. And a couple of FMC messages. Oh, that's just the autopilot warning. Uh, flight directors can come off at this point as well. And um, what's the. Curious to know the message. Okay, that can go away. That's not a problem. End of route. Thank you. So parking brake, that's what we're left with at the moment, so that's fine. Um, so, um, just to uh, show you where the terminal is here. Well, actually, that's where you could actually use that line. Okay, and that's where we're heading. So, I normally will taxi in that direction. And then, um, sometimes I'll park up and just go into camera view, just see where, where to park. 
problem with an aircraft of this size is that it won't fit every single space. Now the other thing we can do at this point is get the APU started in case we don't get ground power. It does take a minute or so to be operational. See the other end of the airport there. Oops, not so easy to control. It's really stunning. There's so much going on. So we get the APU um, generator warning as um, well. You can see, it's actually spooling down now. Or sort of spooling up. Sorry, what am I talking about? So it says the generator's off, which is correct. Um, well, it's kind of not correct, but it's now on, so that message should disappear. There it is, just as it's spooled up. So maybe the next flight will go from uh, Albuquerque to Phoenix. Um, Phoenix is one I've upgraded, it's a free upgrade. I think it's short final as well, or Mr. X. I think they're two of the same. Um, again, looks really good. And I can see a slot there, so I'm just going to park it on the end of this line, the terminal. So you have to be a little careful because this is not a small aircraft. Um, I normally go, normally I'll end up um, going around here and yeah, we go into one of these, maybe this one here, uh, Alpha 10 is probably the best one for us. You can see the aircraft there, and actually, I'll try it's not very, not really advised to fly so remotely, but. with that I think. It's like um, sending a spouse to find a parking space <laughs> and you hold it for them. <laughs>
and let's go back to the cockpit view for this. And there's our good old marshaller. Nice grunge texture on the on the parking bay, exactly how it would look. Sometimes you have to just raise your level a little bit to see the marshaller still. Come on, just a bit more. And there we are. Fantastic. Brakes on, AP is running, and engines can come off. And just make sure we've got the electrics are still on. Packs off is because we don't have the air bleed from the APU. And just go through switching everything off, all the hydraulics off, air driven electric and engine generators, bleed from the engines, taxi lights are off, running lights off, cargo heat off, fuel. We can actually, we can actually switch that off, it doesn't affect the APU because it'll take a feed anyway. Um, and we'll just set up our ground. So we'll put chocks, we'll get high pressure and power, gate configuration for the passengers. And we can open the door now. You see a slight depressurization there. And we can unload. And normally I'd set this for each flight, uh, leave this for the next flight. Um, can be good to do cold and dark starts, um, but it's not really, I don't think it's necessary um, on every flight. It just means you spend hours doing the same thing over and over again. I'll switch that off as well. So that was it, um, Salt Lake City departure um, from there, that's the paid scenery from Short Final to Albuquerque, also by Short Final. Um, really good scenery, using four flight en route, which I hope you enjoyed and see the benefit of. Uh, I'll put links to uh, that in the description. Um, thanks for joining me today, I look forward to the next flight. Um, Please subscribe and if you want any particular flights um, then I'd be happy to oblige um, and any questions just um, put them in the, the comments section. Thanks so much for your, your, your company today and see you again aboard soon. Take care. Bye now.